Microsoft gets so good that they owned it. But then a GitLab challenger appeared. We talk about Firefox versus Chrome, and we draw pretty pictures about it. Linus has said no to 5.0. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. And they're not four lights. There's three Ubuntu's in a strange place, too. More about that in a minute. This is another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, and uh, talk about some of the fun things going on in open source in the world of penguins and floss and all that other fun stuff. I'm Ben Stone, joined by Hollywood Jill in LA, keeping it down, uh-huh. keeping it real, wearing a very topical shirt. <laughs> yes. Get lab. Right on. Yes. <laughs> and from Space Britannia, you know him, you love him, one Pedro Mateus, wearing, I don't know, one of his weird t-shirts, probably Star Wars, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. It's a a um, stormtrooper with a headset. <laughs> <laughs> it seems about right. It seems about right. So what's been going on? Uh, if you watch Saturday, we were trying out. We, we started testing last week with, you know, when something old is new again with Jitsi. Mm-hmm. It's gotten a lot better. And so we're slowly adding back to it and seeing how we can work it into our tool chain. Big fires on Saturday, but now we have uh, Jordan on that with Pedro on Saturday, and we have Jill on it as well. So video and audio mm-hmm. should be cleaned up until it breaks. I'm sure it's going to break, yeah. so <laughs> grab the popcorn, kids. That's going to be a thing. That's what I've been up to. What have you been up to, Jill? Oh, boy. Well, Monday was my last day of teaching um, computer animation and motion graphics at the lo- local community college. So um, since it was their last day and I got to see all their their videos, I made sure that in the summer they would be continuing to use Linux and uh, Blender and Krita and all the things. <laughs> so oh, all right. That was, that was cool. And yay, I'm on summer break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, around uh, the English uh, side of the world. Well, the English English side of the world. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just alienating people right off the bat uh well i got a uh, 4k screen so i've been uh watching a lot of 4k video and running a lot of uh, game benchmarks at 4k to see just how much the performance drops surprisingly not a whole lot but then again the 1080 is finally finally getting a chance to spread its wings and I can hear the fans going off when a particularly intensive game goes on. So yeah, that's uh, interesting. Right on. <laughs> so I guess we just need to start off with it because uh, yeah. Yeah. This, this, is, well. this is the thing, man. So everyone, yeah, it's the big one. Everyone panic. Yes. Wait, don't panic. I don't know. What are we talking about? GitHub, Microsoft's buying a crucial part of the software ecosystem. <laughs> To which I'll say, you know, maybe this, we just need to seriously calm down a little bit because, you know, it's not like Microsoft has a long and sordid history of buying companies and turning them into hot piles of garbage with a quickness. Mm -mm, That's not a thing. Uh, You know, here is the thing, though. This is something I I want to talk about is I don't quite understand the apocalyptic overreaction to this. You know, Mm -hmm. Older Linux developers, self-included, paranoid, rightfully so, about old Microsoft, and Mm -hmm. it's kind of justifiable. I I understand that. But you do have to remember that today's Microsoft under Nadella, not that Balmer Microsoft, but there's still plenty, and we've said this before, plenty of Balmer DNA floating around Microsoft. And we've seen some of those tentacles come out. And who's to say the next CEO... It's not going to be like a mini bomb or a mini me. And um, yeah, I, I think uh, that's the breaking news um, here, folks, is <laughs> we've just confirmed that Microsoft is engaged in illegal human cloning experiments to make mini bombers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jill. Oh, yeah. So, um, OK, well, I am sure Microsoft won't make any major changes anytime soon because they don't want to scare off the community. So um, I'm sure they're just going to keep it as is for a while. And we have to remember that GitHub is a business whose goal is to make as much money as possible for its investors, creators, and staff. 
And they actually, GitHub could have been charging for all of its, all their accounts all along, um, but they never did. And um, they do have elements, uh, actually it's more, they have more closed source with a little bit of open. And um, honestly, that's just like Microsoft. It's mostly closed with a little bit of open. And their new CEO is Nat Friedman, who is the co-founder of Gnome and uh, Zim Zimian. And once again, Microsoft cannot change the GNU general public license or the laws that protect it. So we, we have that protection. And, <laughs> and, but as Ben said, so it begins the mass migration to the completely open source um, GitLab. And you can, if, if you want to move away from GitHub, you can use GitLab or Bit, Bitbucket instead, or roll mm -hmm. your own revision control server like Iculus did and the Blender Foundation uses. And the GIMP just did, by the way, also. Well, I mean, that's kind of been in the works for that business. Yeah. Um, Bitbucket, man, and uh, GitLab. It's kind of yeah. a thing, Pedro. It is, and uh, GitLab uh, has kind of hit uh, a big one. Mostly to no fault of their own, uh, they just had the tools in place to say, yeah, you can easily migrate your GitHub repos to GitLab repos. And uh, when it was confirmed that Microsoft had, in fact, acquired uh, GitHub on Monday, by the end of the day, there had been over 15,000 projects that had moved to GitLab. That's that's kind of crazy. So like 15,000 projects, poof gone and it what it does say about microsoft's move in buying github is that yes people still do remember the old microsoft and they do remember stuff like skype they remember stuff like hotmail and it's it's kind of a shame and a bit of a slap in the face. Uh, when uh, GitHub, uh, we had a story a couple of weeks back about how GitHub had had the best year in their whole history with 2017. And now it's gone. And it's going to take a long time to get back to that level. <laughs> I don't know. One of the things I really enjoyed seeing was my old buddy, Ryan. Um, Iculus, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> For most of the early 2000s, uh, he was known as the Linux gaming industry. And he write, mm -hmm. wrote on his Twitter, don't mind me. I'm busy printing out this article and stapling it to the eyeballs of everyone that ever gave me expletive deleted for running my own revision control server instead of using GitHub. <laughs> now, that's another topic is, uh, you know, uh, I think Foxy pointed out in our show notes was, you know, that was another thing Blender's done is, you know, they mm -hmm. hosted their own. And that makes sense. I mean, we've seen the mass migration over to GitLab, which effectively has DDoS their service um, <laughs> in a couple of days. That was kind of wild. But uh, it's Microsoft. I, we we don't know. We were talking before we went live. Like, well, could it have been worse? And no, really, I don't know how you could frame it. It's like, no, not really. No, could it? Pedro's like, well, EA could have bought them. <laughs> but <laughs> Everything is DLC now. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're just going to have to wait and see. I, I kind of have a feeling that Microsoft, you know, showed up Steve Buscemi. Hello, fellow kids. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we do the open source stuff now. And it's an empty house. It's an empty house. Now, Microsoft, if, if you want to earn some back some of that trust, I know a lot of people are like, um, why don't you open source Windows? I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not get crazy now. Uh, but how about like open sourcing old Skype, you know, the one that you didn't develop, the one that worked mm -hmm. like the client and server for that, that'd be really good because your new Skype's so much better. No one would use that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. No one. Mm. Mm -hmm. no one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like we're uh, sl uh, slowly counting down to the time when Microsoft could eventually do that, but uh, they never will. I'm right. They won't. What do we got going on next, Pedro? Ultimate. Up next is, uh, well, it's GitLab Ultimate. And uh, in, you know, seeing the influx of new projects and whatnot into their servers, they decided, you know what, let's do a good. And a good they did. They have uh, GitLab Ultimate and GitLab Gold now being free for education and open source projects. That is 
freaking awesome. Well played, GitLab. It's it was like, oh yeah, uh, Microsoft bought GitHub. GitLab walks on stage. It's free for education and open source. Drop mic. Boom. <laughs> It's, yeah. it's a good thing, man. I mean, it, now completely free for educational open source. Uh, the ultimate version, self-hosted, GitLab Gold, yep. hosted on GitLab.com. You're going to get unlimited access to Epix, Roadmap, Static, Application, Security Testing. It doesn't come with support, but they're like, yo, if you want some of that support, it's 95% off, 499 well, 499 $495 <laughs> per user per month. This is taking advantage of of a bad situation well very well in fact <laughs> yeah jill are you still with us perhaps nope nope perhaps i see not. the uh, no <laughs> looks like her icon has gone to the default uh jitsu one well <laughs> jill will be back um up next we have uh, you know the usual chrome versus firefox but from a different perspective maybe maybe someone has actually been able to find a way to justify breaking away from the stranglehold that uh, Chrome has on desktop browsers and use Firefox instead. Or maybe they just realized, yeah, Firefox isn't as bad as it used to be. Uh, Catherine Squab, Schwab, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, she uh, wrote a story. And it's a, a long one uh, where she goes through all the things uh, that uh, got her to move away, mostly privacy concerns, which is to be expected. Uh, Chrome, uh, especially after the whole GDPR thing, people are, whether they want to or not, much more aware of uh, privacy policies and whatnot. So maybe if you've been iffy on Chrome all along, maybe it's a good time to give the fox another try. I don't know, man. This is, uh, definitely looks like a wall of text. But, you know, I'm kind of wondering, am I the only person that has no problem whatsoever just running all the browsers except for Opera? I don't know why I don't use you, Opera. I love you, but I just never think to install you. Because um, like, currently, right now, I have Chrome, Chromium, Firefox. I have Firefox extended support. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Chrome Beta? I have that installed. Hey, Google, it'd be really nice if I could set like preferences between Chromium and Chrome Beta and they didn't like match each other all the time. <laughs> uh, but this kind of comes across as uh, a little hand, like fist wavy to me. It's like privacy and rawr. It's, uh, it's, I'm guessing it's the reason that the author found to justify her move to, um, Firefox. And it's, I get it in a way, I kind of get it because yes, Chrome is ubiquitous. Uh, it, even in the workplace nowadays, you see people using Chrome and mm -hmm. hey, it works. But if you are privacy minded, then yes, Firefox does have the upper hand on that, even though they have a much smaller market segment. Uh, they do have the security features in place out of the box. Mm -hmm. So and uh, there's also the advantage that it uses a teeny tiny little bit less power while playing a 720p video on YouTube. I got a chance to test that with the X240. And um, yeah, it uses two watts less power uh, than if I was watching the exact same video on Chrome. So that's good. Oh man, <laughs> sold on that. <laughs> uh, one, one thing that was in the article, to quote this exactly, I can't remember why I decided to use Chrome in the first place. I, I, I walked out on stage and I said, oh, oh, let me refresh your memory as to why you did, in case you forgot. <laughs> because Firefox, before Chrome, had become very bloated and very crashy. I mean, yes. it, Firefox, <laughs> if you don't remember, was a hot mess. Mm -hmm. But it was still a better alternative than Internet Explorer. I mean, when you were competing against that, you were like, you know what, I'll deal with this hot mess, just not to have you around Chrome did come in and provide competition, which was good, Jill. What, what, what yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, you know, as a Linux user, I'm constantly aware of the give and take of the Chrome browser and the privacy of the Firefox browser and often switch back and forth between the two. And most of the time though, I use Firefox, but I also like to use Vivaldi, which is Chromium based and unlike Chrome, 
does not send use statistics back to Google, which is uh, really awesome. So I, I go back and forth and it also depends on what websites I'm going to and whatnot. So, um, and uh, like Facebook, for instance, but I've installed the plugin to help with security on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Um, out of the box, Firefox, to its credit, is more privacy focused than Chrome ever thought about being, you know, because yeah. that's not data collection is not its business. Then exactly. again, I have said I'm not apologizing for anything is <laughs> Google once Google got rid of don't be evil and was like, come on, guys, pick up with them the hen. You're like, yeah, all right. You know, I know what you're in the business of. <laughs> Reading the article, Pedro, it's like, couldn't a lot of this just be solved by installing Privacy Manager? Uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of the tracking issues and the whatnots that uh, the author refers to could, you could just get rid of them with Privacy Manager. It's... Uh, that's what it's there for. It uh, uh, While you're browsing, it holds the uh, tracking cookies and doesn't let sites track you as you move on to other websites. Or say you bought a toaster on Amazon, like uh, the example that she gives in the article. Uh, it's um, uh, all of a sudden, all the ads that you see are for toasters. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, privacy manager yeah. is uh, the way to go, even in Definitely. Chrome. Use <laughs> what work. You use the right tool for the job because mm -hmm. let's face it, some things work better with Firefox. Some things work, especially with Quantum. Quantum, uh, oh, no yes. pun, was a quantum leap. I mean, it made Firefox usable again. Some things work better in Chrome, like Jitsi. Jitsi just works better in mm -hmm. Chrome. It's yeah. WebRTC based, open standard yep. stuff. Don't ask me why. It's an open source <laughs> with open source, but. <laughs> that, that's a true, true. All right, Pedro, yes. Light 4 OS. Why are we talking about this, man? Well, it's, uh, you know, since we are a Linux news uh, show of some sort, <laughs> do, do you watch uh, the we do have do? to... <laughs> We, we have Aww. to at least, you know, keep up the pretense of talking about Linux. And uh, when people think Linux, they think, oh, there's so many distros. And this is one of them. This is Linux Lite. And version 4 is now in its final form. You can download it. You can install it. Uh, the big change is, of course, instead of being based on 1604 LTS like the previous version, now it's based on 1804. And the focus, as they say, it's different. But it's more of the same. Uh, they are a transition distro for people who are coming from Windows and they are trying to figure out what the heck a Linux is. Uh, so they're targeting those people while still uh, wanting to remain light on resources. And uh, one of the things that caught my eye with this particular post is um, down at the bottom of the very first uh, forum post that they made. It's like, oh yeah, if you'd like to speed up your boot times, Here's how you get rid of the all the virtual box stuff. And yeah, if you're installing this on a low-powered machine that was never going to be running a virtual box of any description, that's good. Oh, Pretty good. Oh, look, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> and they've replaced LX terminal with a um, XFCE terminal. And, mm -hmm. Listen, listen, I, I'm a massive XFCE for fan human. Don't think XFCE terminal's lighter than LX terminal. Yeah, no. <laughs> I just use Xterm. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> same here. And, um, you know, this is a light distro, but there are other uh, several other distros in the space, including Peppermint OS and Lubuntu. They use the lighter LXD desktop, of course, but Linux Lite, which uses the heavier XFCE4 desktop, actually takes up less memory to run. And I tested that in top. It actually um, uh, ran... Um, uh, utilize memory a lot better. So, and that was pretty, pretty good for being a, a so-called heavier desktop. Are light distro yeah. still a thing? I mean, like mm -hmm. on regular usage, I remember a DSL was, but uh, that's when I was doing like, oh, I need to make a router. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there are uh, obviously the specifically focused distros that you want to run this kind of server, install this distro. You want to run a desktop operating system, install this distro. But this one is trying to get the bo uh, the best of both worlds, and there are yeah. 
still a lot of they don't call them netbooks anymore but uh there are still those low powered machines that people is like oh yeah i don't use that that one that much so maybe i'll try this linux thing on it and hey if it works good maybe we'll get a bit of a comfort what would you normally use yes. because you've owned a few calculators in your day yes uh See, right now, I would use Solus. The Mate edition is um, it's pretty good. It's uh, very light and, well, I uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sort of unwittingly contributed uh, to the uh, Compton uh, default config that it comes with. And it works really well, be it with uh, an old low-powered AMD APU or even with current-gen um, intel cpus so that's yeah that that would be my choice solus mate for mm -hmm. a low power machine yeah also uh um bodai linux is very good for that as well um, yes they catered originally to the netbooks so i have that it, on several of my old netbooks <laughs> it's possibly the last distro to uh have mm -hmm. um elementary uh not not elementary um enlightenment by default enlightenment yeah 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 <laughs> and enlightenment does run very light That's that was such a letdown i remember you waited forever <laughs> for enlightenment it's finally out and you install it really <laughs> we, we, we waited for the sorry enlightenment oh enlightenment's pretty <laughs> it, it's yeah until yeah, you feed it's it. a little buggy until you yes. feed it five monitors jill then it just mm -hmm. it's just like no. oh yeah no Even i with know that's two story. monitors it struggles <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let's talk about something up your alley, Jill. Yes, definitely. Well, this is uh, the Dell Canvas and Totem. This is is a, a, a large format a graphic tablet that you can use a dial or knob with as well as a, um, a stylus. Mm -hmm. And um, these are actually starting to get used heavily, extensively in art, design, animation, and gaming houses and would help the adoption of Linux apps in these industries. And in fact, I've spent many years using an editing knob to zoom in and out of video audio timelines with large projects in Adobe Premiere, etc. And it would be nice to have this capability in Caden Live and DaVinci Resolve. So that would be really awesome. It actually, that knob, the wonderful thing about it is it helps from carpal tunnel syndrome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you have a timeline that's like an hour long, it's easy to move back and forth on, on your videos. And but then for drawing, honest, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> support for these kinds of tablets hasn't been great on Linux, yeah, has it? Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And in fact, you know, the Microsoft Surface, you know, they were the first to introduce one and that really took off in the in the art houses and whatnot so yeah this is and really, this, uh, really yeah cool. this article uh comes from christian fk schaller uh blog uh, his blog yeah well it's the gnome yeah. blog so uh it's the gnome team actually doing something useful for once uh to be fair they were the ones who had the already okay support for the wacom tablets yeah and the wacom. bamboos and, yeah you know um <laughs> Keep in mind that neither Jill or myself uh, share the unbridled, un semi-unjustified <laughs> hatred for all things GNOME projects. Yeah. <laughs> it's not everything. It's just the stupid, stupid decision-making process that they have. But yes. yeah, they uh, are now actively um, working on having proper support for the Dell Canvas and the knob. Which uh, I will never get tired of. It, 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 it's a knob. It's Listen, a yes. glorified scroll wheel that uh, you just spin. <laughs> Once you have yeah. a knob, you just realize everything needs turning. Yes. <laughs> this is. I wish neat. I could use the knob with this. Yeah. <laughs> this is neat. Well, the, yeah. The other thing about this is, if you don't realize, I spent over five hundred dollars on my original knob in the nineties. So they're uh, real cheap now. So this is a, this is this is bringing even though the the unit itself is quite expensive, as uh, Pedro pointed out, one point eight, <laughs> one thousand eight hundred dollars. Yeah, 8. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still a lot cheaper than these devices used to be. One eighteen hundred bucks <laughs> so. to me, looking at something like this, that's ridiculously cheap. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're poor like me, as much as I would like to give <laughs> one of these to Nori, because uh yeah, she's all artsy and stuff. Um yeah. 
Uh, yeah, no, that, that that's a very high barrier of entry for me, monetarily yeah, speaking. Just take a knob off the hob and be like, <laughs> make, pretend, make believe. Um, but but it's better than a fifteen thousand uh, dollar large thirty two inch uh, screen that you can do a stylus on, like they use at Mattel Toys for doing their art. <laughs> right, one like um, yeah. Scott Michaud has. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly, exactly. <laughs> and that thing Microsoft that released their oversized surface thing that just yes. mm-hmm. it's like that's really neat, and we put a fifty yeah. four hundred RPM drive in it. It's like, yeah. Oh, I know that was. That was pretty lame. <laughs> just like, well, it, it's easy to read. No, you know, you have to dis- disassemble the entire thing to get to that. Yeah. It's like, geez, guys. <laughs> All right. Hardware to hardware, GDP pocket two, mini laptop. This is a thing. Yep. People love the first one. Yes. Oh, yeah. The first one mm-hmm. did really well. And, uh, you know, uh, cashing in on that success. Uh, part of the complaints that they got was, uh, yeah, it's a bit too bulky. Uh, you know, for something that you're supposed to carry around in your pockets a bit too thick so they made a thinner version uh it's not uh, available yet but it will be soon enough and it's probably going to have around the same price or perhaps a teeny tiny little bit more expensive since they now have a um, slightly faster processor it's still intel obviously it's an m3 the new version is the m3 7y30 it's a cabby lake uh, it's got four or eight gigs of RAM, depending on which one you choose. It still uses that uh, really slow and crappy EMMC storage. Um, the battery is about the same you got in the original pocket, and you get one extra USB port just for funsies. And it's mm-hmm. uh, if it weren't for the keyboard being so shallow, and I'm assuming very crappy, uh, it would actually be an improvement all around. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and um, as with the original GPD Pocket, the Pocket 2 will play well with Linux as well. And um, like Ven was saying, uh, the Pocket got very good reviews for being fast enough to play up to mid-level games in Steam on Linux and great for emulators. And yeah. honestly, I've been wanting one as a nice traveling gaming companion. I would picked up an ultra-portable ThinkPad X1 and 20E just for this purpose. Hmm. And it, it, the only requirement is it had to pay, had to play at least Portal Two, <laughs> so <laughs> and Talos Principle. <laughs> but um, I love mini computers, of course, and this one would be a nice addition to my vintage computer collection, as well as my mini computer collection, which has grown quite huge. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, people really dug it. Uh, I think as uh, was other Matthew has pointed out, he's like, yeah, man, a lot of Linux love for this piece of kit, and. There's a good community around the original. I'm sure there's going to be run for this six, 700 watt stinky caches. It's not mm-hmm. too bad. I was like, Ooh, 6,800 milliamp battery. And I was like, that sounds really nice and really good. And until I remembered it's powering a Cabby Lake X86, <laughs> <laughs> but it is the low power. Uh, it's the evolution of the atom. It's the core M. Mm-hmm. So yeah. <laughs> and yeah, like Jill said, it's, it doesn't ship with Linux out of the box, but it should be pretty easy to pop it in. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. What do we have up next? Oh, the that, five point no. Linus Torvalds <laughs> decides the world isn't ready for five point oh. Oh man, hashtag vanilla eyes. Uh, he's released a new kernel anyway. He's called it four seventeen. Yep, four seventeen's out, and he kind of got into like the reasons he didn't name it what he did Jill it's something about his fingers and his toes yes <laughs> oh my well he always likes to keep us on our toes with a little bit or a lot of snark thrown in that's just that's that's the way Linus rolls and he's allowed because he's master of the universe <laughs> yeah yeah he but, even made the pun it's like yeah I suspended <laughs> around 420 he didn't make yeah. that joke uh he said which is um I run out of fingers and toes to keep track of minor releases and thus start getting <laughs> mightily confused. Uh, yeah, yes. so we will probably see a 4.19 similar to what we saw with the 3 series, mm-hmm. and then we will move to 5.0, which sounds reasonable. One of the things I noticed was, I was reading, so 417, once it gets, it's like oh, a bunch of minor fixes, changes, uh, they removed some old power architecture. It's like, and we've added support for one weird mouse with two squirrel wheels. It's like, wait a minute. Yes. yes. Wait, wait, I think I bought that mouse. We're talking like 1995, 96. 
it was this Jake Mouse that had one vertical and one horizontal. Yeah, and I think it was a Logitech. <laughs> I think I have one too as well. I don't remember. I also remember Logitech. that mouse wheels didn't work in Linux at the time, so I just bought whatever yeah. was cheapest, and it was the cheapest one on the shelf. And Microsoft mouse. <laughs> no, I wouldn't buy it. You're talking to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, it was probably a Logitech mouse <laughs> or a derivative. That was the thing. It's good to see. Has anyone uh, yep. played with 417 yet? Uh, no, I'm still on 416. No. Mm. <laughs> Man, I'm on 415 on a render box right now, and just because I'm having some issues with virtual cams on 416, that'll yet to be resolved. So, uh, good. Glad it's out. Yep. Get out there and test it. Uh, one more. What do we have? Uh, there are three. Versions. There are three, three Ubuntu's. Ubuntu's. Yeah. So, uh, you know that uh, there are, uh, you can just go to the Windows Store, literally, and download a Linux. That's something you could do in wait, 2018. Wait, okay, we like and, making this joke. Can someone actually <laughs> install 7 Linux now? <laughs> uh, you can. Ever since uh, Microsoft gave you the ability to spin up your own distro and load it up like you would with the... Um, with the default Ubuntu packages that they offer, well, uh, now you can have all the Linuxes on your Windows machine. Uh, and this one is, uh, it showed up because there is not one Ubuntu package on the um, on the Steam store. On the, on on the, the Steam Windows store? store. No. <laughs> uh, on the Windows store, there are three. There's a meta package, mm -hmm. um, a, a separate package for Ubuntu 18.04, and a separate package for Ubuntu 16.04. So technically, two Ubuntus, but we'll let them have this one if it makes them happy. The meta yes. package, just, yeah. <laughs> well, we're looking at the screenshot for everyone on audio, and I mean, it genuinely is just like Ubuntu 18.04 followed by 18.04, and they just all three say app. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like the, it's spin the wheel of booga booga. It's like, which one do you get? You don't know until you find out. It. I've, oh, Microsoft store, Microsoft, come on. This is why people yeah. are scared of you touching GitHub. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. For things like that, man. Uh, but hey, uh, it, in uh, Ubuntu's defense, that's almost on parity with how many ways there are to install software. <laughs> Ubuntu. With, Synaptic. Fair, fair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's Synaptic, Snaps. there's the Ubuntu <laughs> Software Center, mm -hmm. there's um, yeah. the uh, XFCE as its own, uh, there's another one, Mate, uh, or Mate, or however you want to say it, has their own, uh, it's, yeah. Well, you there's got the software store, then you have like the software installer, then you got just regular Synaptic. And, mm -hmm. it, and you have GDebby if you just want to install that one yeah. loose deb. <laughs> it's fun times. <laughs> fun times. Uh, do we get anything else about this? Is, uh, is, is This is just there. I guess somebody's right in if you use this nonsense. I'm curious. I want to hear from somebody. Just like, this yeah. has made my life livable. <laughs> well, Having... Jordan has been using it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at work <laughs> with Windows. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Where's uh, 1404 or 1204? <laughs> They're playing favorites. <laughs> uh, to be fair, most of the stuff that ran in uh, 1404 also ran in uh, 1604. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And 1204, it, it's no longer supported. So, let's not yeah no very very <laughs> true well microsoft did do this to so-called they they had those separate versions so they could, you could be sandboxed into those mm -hmm. versions and true. not worry about the, about the the latest update which will which comes with the just ubuntu uh yeah store install mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right uh we're gonna be jumping into a slice of pie but first we need to thank some beautiful party people making this possible because check this out we have this crazy idea um, really bizarre business model we have going on where we just give everything away for free. And if you like it, you can kind of support us on Patreon. Keep the show going. But, uh, Pedro, we got two new beautiful people who's decided to yes. join in. Uh, Nine mm, Bullets yeah. is our uh, one of our latest Patreons. Thank you very much, Nine Bullets. And uh, we have a bit of a returning Patreon. Uh, formerly Renda Maskey, now Orderly Unicode. Uh, she's on our Discord as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, welcome back. Thank you all very, very much for your support. You guys and gals and whatnots are awesome. 
The what that sounded very dismissive. <laughs> hey, you got to watch out for the whatnots, man. Those are the ones that'll get you. Uh, hey, if you find this nonsense enjoyable, considering uh, maybe kicking a few shackles, a few quarters, for, if you can afford four quarters a week, that'd be brilliant to help fuel not only this, but the nightmare train that chugs along the other five days of the week. And uh, come get some bonus sodas. we got some rewards for our patrons in there. Uh, two new things. Two new things. Unlike some shows, we're not putting stuff behind paywalls that were free. Mm-hmm. But we're going to add some new things, which we did. Turns out that people actually listen to our pre pre super shows in Pedro. I found that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because uh, we're working, uh, I'll talk about that in a few seconds, but the pre pre super shows in is basically our weekly production meeting. Mm-hmm. It's not scripted. It, if you ever want to be a fly on the wall, that's available. For patrons, you get a custom RSS feed, plug that in, you can watch it. There's even a video now. And uh, Linux Gamecast minus Linux Gamecast. I made that uh, to test the box. It, it's Garfield minus Garfield. It's all the bits of the four-hour live stream minus the show. So if you want to listen to the roughly four hours of improv comedy with some gaming at the end, that yep. will definitely sort <laughs> you out. Um, everyone, with the Humbles and the Amazon affiliate links, you're blowing us up. Thank you. And uh, that's been a massive help because you've seen some of the jankiness that's gone on. Well, hopefully you won't see a lot of it in the (laughs) produced version, but we want to thank our 114 beautiful party patrons for making that possible. One thing we're going to be working on is we kind of hinted at it. This is why I know people listen to the pre pre super shows in Pedro. Okay. Because we were spitballing. You, 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 you can go back and listen to me going, all right, how can we get out of this cheap as possible? <laughs> so we, we want to reconstruct the Rainbow Bridge and mm-hmm. do it right. It's like, can we do it with raspberry pies? That'd be nice because those are like $35 a piece. Yeah. Mm, a lot of people got back to me and said, you can't do that. That's not going to uh, work. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, informed people were listening. Thank you. <laughs> the suggestions I got were... Like Odroids, high end Odroids, and I'm like those things yeah. are ninety bucks a piece, man. It's like that. Yeah, uh, Linux yeah. Daru mentioned that while we were yeah. having that bit of a talk. Oh, yeah, he did too. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, what I've decided on, if you guys want to throw in some suggestions, that's what I'm looking for right now. Is I have the components for Project Bifrost listed mm-hmm. on our. Um, Wish list. I don't like calling it wish list because this is stuff we're just buying. If you if you know of something better and cheaper than these one, two, three, these top four components, let me know. Uh, actually, that's I had a look at the list earlier, and the price that the those nooks are going for now that's not too bad considering how expensive they were when they first released. Well, that that's the quad core one. Yeah. It's the uh, NU C6. I think putting everything together, like with the capture, with that, they come out for a little under $300 a piece, and we got to put together mm-hmm. two of those. So, worst case scenario, everyone, you're going to get some new how to videos. So, <laughs> stay on the lookout for that. <laughs> and thanks again for everybody awesome. helping us out. Uh, let's see. Let's do a slice of pie. A pie map of America. Dude. Sweet <laughs> as pie bakery. I know what you did with the name there, even though you didn't do it like that. <laughs> I can respect it. Joe, what do we got going up? Oh, oh, well, this is an awesome device that helps you uh, count bees with the Raspberry Pi. It uses a camera and a uh, tensor flow on um, in Raspbian. This picture, Joe, this picture right here is just... <laughs> People have this. This is like nightmares on hard mode. It's like, look, yeah. it's bees and red dots on the bees. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. they have HP orbs. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, what what's really amazing is um, the creator goes into detail on on how he set up the code in TensorFlow to mm-hmm. uh, track all the bees, and um, they. You know, he he's he's saying, of course, that this would be be good to find out why colonies are are dying and whatnot. But um, I also thought that this would be very helpful to beekeepers for keeping track of bees colonies and their effect on pollination of crops and far on farms. And I I was wondering if it would be really cool as if 
it would be really wonderful to find a way to track the size of the bee as well. So you can keep track of the queen from the rest of the colony and vice versa. So mm, um, you could, yeah. but you'd probably need, because they're just using the standard Raspberry Pi camera for this project, which is yeah. insane. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess you would need either a couple of more cameras just to get like the triangulation going and tell, okay, from this camera, it's this big, from this camera, it's this big and get a bit of a scale go. And then you yeah. could probably have the, triangulate. Um, yeah, yeah, you could have like the size, um, you could measure it, but uh, as it currently stands, since it's from a fixed perspective, it's going to be really hard because the bees closer to the camera are going to look bigger. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. That's just a neat thing. And yeah, and there's yeah. Uh, <laughs> genuine applications for that that could help with, yes. you know, keeping bees. Or if you're like me, I keep Nicholas cages. So <laughs> hashtag, you know, not, not, not the bees, right? Not the bees. Oh, no. Not the bees. Um, the next little bit we have coming out, man. Check this out. Stick pie, raspberry pie, ZW with GPIO buttons and a neat paper display. This, this, this immediately fell when I just, I was just perusing because, you know, Google's like, here's a Raspberry Pi story, go read it. And I was like, okay, <laughs> it looks pretty. Just taking, you know, the W, we found a piece mm -hmm. of the e-paper that's roughly the same size, covers the entire W. And I was like, all right, let's put some buttons on it, play around. I don't really know what I want to do with this, but further on, now, all this is going to be in our show notes. He mm -hmm. put together how he stuck it together. I was like, wait a minute. IRL notifications. Think if you put a little weather station on this or text messages, notifications yeah. like that, because you don't want to install all of that insanity needed to get the KDE stuff up and working, even though they have a version that doesn't necessarily require it. But I like this. It's 3D yeah. printed. Stick it together. And it's pretty cheap. And he does make a point. He's like, just get the single color e-paper don't get the tricolor because you can't uh there's a couple of issues of just like updating with it mm -hmm. and, so they have that's the the issue with e-ink displays is they have a very very low refresh rate mm -hmm. which i guess goes uh with the territory when you're just dealing with a very low power very limited spectrum um display then yeah you also make the refresh rate lower and all of a sudden, the power gets even less. So it's great to see. He managed to get it to work. He only needed to make a custom PCB to uh, mount to the Pi Zero to have it directly powered off of USB without needing the uh, micro USB cable. Mm -hmm. And it just turned the whole thing into one self-contained unit, which is awesome. I'm digging it, man. Um, yeah. Love seeing cool. That's if you get any ideas or some cool projects that we could shout out uh, send them to us. Jill, are you back with us? Ah, well, she's back in spirit, just without audio. <laughs> that happens to her sometimes, man. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's uh, growing pains of Jitsi. All right, before we get out of here, we want to give everyone a chance to scream back in our direction. Still, if we got some things right, wrong, sideways, laughter, maybe you just got some, you know, questions. Like, hey, man, how do I let it? It's probably a good group of people to ask. Pedro, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, you can go about doing that by going to linuxgamecast.com and hitting the lovely little contact button that's mm -hmm. cleverly hidden on the navigation bar at the top. And once you do that, there's a very neatly uh, arranged form with a little selection box at the top. Make sure to pick LWDW on that one. You can also send some uh, hate mail for that Saturday show we do. Or if you're a game developer and you'd like to cover to us to cover your game, wow, that's, that was a hard sentence. Uh, you can do that too. Just make sure to include enough keys so that uh, all three hosts of the show can play your game. Sound good? All right. <laughs> Seems Here, legit. We have some feedback, and we have some feedback about last week's show. And uh, <laughs> Frazo, uh, he, uh, we've had him on. Uh, the big brains behind Music Brains, or at least one of the big brains working for it. Yes. Uh, he's, um, he's, okay, number one. Why would LXQT be in the AUR when it's in Arch Linux's supported repositories? In this case, community? Question mark? Uh, HTTPS, it's the, uh, yeah, 
Okay, what Frizo is talking about in a non-roundabout way of asking is something I mentioned last week. I was like, oh, I'm sure it's in the R, it's just a passing comment. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> the short and long of this yeah. is Frizo, buddy, you know what I meant. <laughs> yeah. And for number two, calling us out, it's uh, what is CPU Z. I kind of got the idea from watching the clip, but not really. I ended up looking at the Wikipedia for info. Don't assume that people know that what random Windows applications do. Get your acts together, fam. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm pretty sure uh, I even went back and watched it when I saw this bit of hate mail. Uh, and Jill specifically said it's a very small application that all it does is to monitor your CPU utilization, uh, your temperatures, your uh, what frequency it's running at, the different flags that the CPU supports, like your triple SEs and your SSE fours and whatnot. That's literally all it does. And yeah, we did mention it. You just weren't paying attention, Frezzo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just having fun with you because he loves you. All right. <laughs> Last but not least, Brian R. writes in. He's like, hey, is there a recommended way to upgrade from 1604 to 1804? Great year. Uh, no, you cannot turn a LTS distribution into an actual year. That is impossible. Um, <laughs> Google, Foo, Google Foo showed me a bunch of sites with conflicting information. Pedro? Ah, uh, young grasshopper. Well, yes. <laughs> if you're moving from one LTS to the other... It's uh, the recommended way would be to do a fresh install. Just back up everything you need. Make sure to keep uh, also back up the .config and .local uh, folders in your that are hidden in your home folder. Uh, that's where all of the configs and data files for your locally installed applications are stored. So you probably want to keep those, but just make a fresh install. There are wildly varying uh, package versions from one LTS to the other. And yeah, it's uh, just do a fresh install. Um, don't listen to anything Pedro just said. Uh, <laughs> <don't>. <laughs> this is not Windows. It's not Mac. If you can do an inline LTS to LTS, will there be issues? Probably. You can, yes. Yeah. What you do <laughs> is, if it's a production box or something that you're going to need for a hot second, Clonezilla, back, up the, back it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do that first, not the home directory, the entire drive. Get yeah. that done. <laughs> Scream YOLO. Do the in-place upgrade. See what happens. Nine times out of 13, it's going to work. There's going to be a few hiccups with it. There's like one or two like, oh, okay, I need to iron this out. And then you can be done with it. But yeah, nuking a box from orbit coming from Pedro, who explicitly didn't nuke his box from orbit for so long, is a bit hypocritical. (laughs) Uh, I never deny that I was a hypocrite. Uh, But it's... uh... When it comes to LTSs, and maybe it's my previously terrible experiences with in-place upgrades with Ubuntu specifically, if it were Fedora, yeah, no, just upgrade, it'll be fine. Ubuntu, on the other hand, there's always, always something, and it's sometimes it's just something that I never had the patience to deal with. So, yeah, I kept 16.04 for as long as I could, and uh, then I did the fresh install Mm -hmm. to Solus. Jill, cool. what, what was your yeah. strategy going from? Well, I I actually f- forced um, 1604 to 1804 and didn't have any problems. But of course, there's the, the usual suspects. You have to up- update your PPAs and whatnot and install, reinstall some software. But it actually went very, very smooth for me. Uh, but it was uh, it, it took a while to do it, <laughs> of course. And it, it is recommended to just wipe it and, and install the fresh version. Or wait till the 18, 1804.1 release. Mm-hmm. There you go. Uh, three completely different conflicting opinions. Um, <laughs> that's why we're here. <laughs> you want yes. cohesion? Uh, the, the rest of the internet's there for you. Oh, wait, no. I did do a Google search myself, and I was like, yeah, that's a bunch of people telling you different things. Do what works for you. Uh, don't, don't listen. I mean, snapshot your drive man and mm-hmm. yeah no you... clonezilla is great just do the whole drive and uh you'll always have that to fall back on worst case scenario man when i was like this is a long term no just just 
snapshot, boom, you're done. Mm-hmm. Try it. If it borks, put it back. Take two. I mean, that's the whole point of this. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Thanks for joining in. Uh, go back and watch the live version, the uncut version, if you if you want yes. to see um, <laughs> Jill catching on fire multiple, multiple times. Aww. It's brilliant. Uh, we'll, we'll see you next week. We love you. Time for some credits. Let's roll them. Yeah. Aww. Oh, boy. Uh, 121. Mm-hmm. To think that... Uh, think that's awesome. A couple of years ago... When we started this, like, uh, yeah, maybe you should do like a midweek show about Linux news. Uh, who, the, who, who's gonna watch that? No one's gonna watch that. <laughs> oh, it's not like Aww. Tuesday, is it? <laughs> hey, I've been winning. <laughs> winning. <laughs> winning? Yes, sure. Uh, I've been winning over the past couple of uh, Tuesdays. Uh, I know that this one was particularly yes. bad because I got two down votes. <laughs> yeah. That was the first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, and, and yeah, Matthew, the, the, there isn't as much to complain about with the, <laughs> those titles. Nope. Bye, Shepard.